Hello and welcome to the first podcast episode of The Drummer and the Great Mountain, a guidebook to transforming adult ADD, ADHD. My name is Bahman Saram and I'm honored and proud to be your host for this podcast and companion to a wonderful new book written by Michael Joseph Ferguson, who will join me every week, author, life coach, and let us uh, get started with kind of the goals of of, uh, this podcast, which is to have this be a companion to Michael's book of The Drummer and the Great Mountain. Michael and I have been talking recently, me being one of Michael's students in his life coaching process that as much as this book is going to mean to folks, we figured why not every once in a while also give you some audio feedback so on your way to work, on your way home from work, you can listen from the author himself and get directly um, some of the points across and we'll take you through the journey of the book via this podcast. Michael, thank you for joining me and welcome. Thanks, Bob, man. I really appreciate that. Tell me in this uh, opening episode something that you absolutely allude to the book, you get to in all your lectures, but I think in in summary format, um, now that people have a chance to hear it directly through their headphones, through their brain waves, tell us your inspiration for the book and, and why this book is here now for us. Well, that's a big question. Um, well, the book was about four years in the making, uh, and on some level, probably about 20 years in the making. So uh, when I was in my early 20s, um, a friend of mine gave me some information about ADD, and I was like, oh, this is it. This is I, These are my struggles. Um, and so uh, as the years have went by, um, and as I've get, gotten a handle on some of those challenges... Uh, I became more and more uh, interested in just supporting other people that were similarly wired and give them some tools that, that were really helpful for me and um, resources. And, and what I found was there was not a lot of, there was a lot of different books out there that had one little piece here and one little piece there, but nothing that was like a really strong compendium personal growth book on adult ADD. And so that's what I set out to write. So as a background, um, I've made my living with creativity, with my creativity, my whole adult life since 19. So I started at 19 as a 3D animator in the beginning of that whole industry. Um, And then working on films, working on television projects, and then eventually starting my own uh, multimedia firm in 1997. Uh, in Newport Beach. And so uh, being one of the things that I noticed as I started working on myself and doing a lot of the personal growth work that I talk about in the book is I became way more effective and the challenges with ADD went way down. So that was the beginning stages of my journey with ADD and then also my perspective, which I allude to in the book or reference pretty strongly in the book, that um, I think that the idea of the hunter-farmer theory, which was proposed by Tom Hartman in a book he wrote in 1992 called ADD, a, a, I believe it's called A Different Perspective or Different Perception, I believe is what it was called, um, hit it right on the head. And I thought that perspective which I'm sure we'll talk about, Mm -hmm. is way more accurate. And it refers to many, many, many people who are like ourselves, artists, Mm -hmm. creative people who um, have this label that they've either adopted or someone else has told them they are, that the the term itself is, is, I think it's a bad term. I think there's a better way to refer to our neurological type that is more empowering and yet still supports us in giving us something to point to and say, yeah, that's me. That's what I need to work on um, without it being labeled as a disorder, which I really have a, a strong issue with. I think there's another way to perceive it. It seems 
and and I'm and I know throughout this series of this podcast, and I've heard you in your lectures and in our coaching sessions say that that same exact thing. And I think we're going to approach this point in so many different ways, but it's about transforming the perspective in your paradigm. And the reason you emphasize that here today is if it's thought of as a disorder, that there's a negative paradigm around that. What I love about the book, what I loved about since the first lecture I went that you had, your presentation on this book, is that you are transforming with this book the thinking for a person who quote unquote has this for terms of a better word has this or is dealing with this or is on this journey or path is that in th- instead of thinking of it as a disorder seeing it as being kind of just your makeup and the challenges that presents in this society which is something I've heard you say over and over and for everybody listening here on this opening podcast this is the paradigm you have to shift to to get on this journey towards and I love another thing you said in your book you don't want people necessarily think about this as fixing something if you could allude to that a little bit yeah and I think this is this is one of the the issues with the term uh, attention deficit disorder okay. is that it um it implies there's something you need to fix and not to discount the challenges, which are many with our particular neurological type. Um, but I think there's another way to perceive it. And so when you have the, the mindset and I've played with this myself quite a bit and had to do my own um, rewiring internally around it, when you perceive yourself as having something you have to fix, then people can come and say, okay, well, here's the cure for uh-huh. ADD, ADHD. Here's the way you, f- you cure, which is like saying, this is the way you're going to cure being Scottish or <laughs> you're going to cure being Iranian. I've been looking for a cure for being Persian for a long yeah. time. There is nothing. Unfortunately. It's absurd. This is just how you're wired. And so Brilliant. your wiring has on the plus side, um, maybe we can go into the strengths and challenges, the plus side being hyper creativity, hyper focus, the ability to see things in a, from a larger perspective. Um, there's also a strength in terms of mastery. A lot of people who are wired this way, and Tom Hartman originally alluded to this just to give him credit, but this, this push towards mastery is something that is very, of all the people that I know that are wired this way, everybody's got it in some way, shape, or form. Uh, the challenges are if you're eating the modern American diet or the standard American diet, sad, which is fast food, high carbs, lots of sugars, uh, you're never going to reach your potential because mm. wired into our neurological type is this hypersensitivity to food, to the things that we put in our body. We need a different kind of diet than someone who would be more like a farmer, which we'll talk about the Mm -hmm. hunter farmer theory in a second, um, can handle a lot more, can eat and have, there's a little more, the brain chemistry seems to be much more malleable. Whereas, um, or I would say maybe more stable, Mm -hmm. whereas hunter types, which is what we'll start referring to ADD types as, um, are much more affected by, what we put in our body and that has to do with dopamine and how our brain chemistry is wired so being that we have this whole being uh, that has all these strengths and then the challenges of of having challenge focusing challenges with consistency Mm -hmm. um, those pieces can become much more manageable when you have a good exercise program and a good diet program. Those two things I can speak absolutely from experience can be life changing and in a very short period of time. And I think what, what I've seen people say, and um, especially people that I think are used to taking medications for this, um, they (laughs) have, um, there's a, there's that kind of quick fix mentality Mm -hmm. 
and they think, well, if I change my diet, that's way too much. And I don't know how I'm going to do that. I, I, it's much easier for me to pop a pill. The challenge <laughs> with that is that's going to affect all the other strengths that you have in terms of creativity and your ability to do things in a way that feels normal to you. And a lot of people that may want who've mentioned that that they've gotten off the ADD meds, that is the, one of the things that they find um that happens when they're on them is they don't feel like they're as creative anymore. They don't feel like themselves anymore. They can get stuff done, which is great. But then on the other end of it, they don't feel like they're managing or maximizing all the other parts of their life. So the other way to deal with those things, an alternative to the medication is a really good diet and exercise program. And, and also then having systems in place that help you manage the challenges that come up. So that you're you're getting all the the benefits of creativity and all the things that give you make you who you are, and bringing those into the world, and then still having a method of managing the challenges. One of the things we're trying to do in having this be the companion to the book is, at least in this first episode here in our first session with all of you who are listening along is to give you some of the hierarchy of the things we're going to be getting into. So in future podcasts, we are going to delve into some of these. So some of the things you're hearing now about diet, exercise, the whole can of worms that is the medicine um, uh, can of worms and and our society and kind of um, how our society looks at this and how we want to look at it. So I want to emphasize that here, right here in the opening is that in future episodes, we're going to have topics that we're going to really hype, kind of get into focus on, which will uh, accompany the book. So what you're hearing right now is a general summary of Michael's inspirations for the book, his own personal experience. And you're going to also hear my experiences for complete transparency. As we've spoken about, I am one of Michael's students in his, um, uh, life coaching. So that is, this is my way of giving back because I want everyone who's listening to completely understand open book transparency that 40 years old and I'm just starting to deal with this now. Um, and I'm not saying that in a negative way. I'm joyous about it. I'm joyous that I ran into Michael. I'm joyous that Michael wrote this book. And when you go to any of Michael's seminars, whether it's his webinar, webinars or in, in person lectures as cliche as it may sounds you are on a journey to find others who have this makeup that you have and you'll notice that it'll even be a struggle for me at times to shift this paradigm into the positive instead of calling it ADD or calling it what it it's just a journey you're on and there's a lot of people like us out there and I'm not just saying that so I, I want to emphasize that we're going to get into the details of of all these things. Tell us, Michael, if you could, since this is kind of the opening and for people who are listening to this because they're on this journey themselves or they're maybe here with us in this room because they have friends or a family member that is struggling with this and they're wondering, is it? Is this what they're going through? Is this what I've been dealing with with them my whole life and yeah. I didn't know why? Tell us a little bit about the drummer in the Great Mountain. Why the name of the book itself? Because I think that's that's an interesting part of why you named it that. Okay, so that's good. You brought up so many good points there. Um, I want to pick up on on all of them. Okay. Um, just as a quick side note, I think that the people that have shown the most interest in this book, far and away, have been people who who either it's their son or daughter, adult son or daughter, mm -hmm. uh, or. Um, people relationship someone they're in a relationship with and like oh my gosh this is exactly them you know how can i support them and also you know the the challenging effects that they're going through as the result of Amazing. of um working with the challenges related to add adhd mm -hmm. um okay so the title of the book um was inspired by a talk it was a um uh there's a storyteller in washington in the Washington area named Michael Mead. He started a, an organization called Mosaic Voices. He works with, he now works with um, at-risk teens. And uh, he, there was a tape that someone had given me for my birthday in, geez, 1993. And uh, he just recorded off the radio, wrote a, wrote a little card, said, I thought you might enjoy this. 
And I I listened to that talk, which was probably about like a two and a half hour talk. I must have listened to it a thousand times. Uh, so much was covered in that. And so one of so what he would do to kind of talk about the the the, the title a bit, he would come out and he would give us he would tell a story and he would he would pick like an old Grimm's fairy tale mm -hmm. and he'd take it section by section and then he would stop and then everyone would discuss the theme and how it relates to them in their life and so many things were covered in this it was just this onslaught of personal growth poetry music um, self-awareness all wrapped in a story and so when I set out to write this book I thought well if I'm going to write something that has any kind of soul to it, I want it to have a central storyline mm -hmm. because I feel like stories are much more accessible to people. And so the beginning story is one section of that story that he told, which is a classic Grimm's fairy tale. And uh, it's the central metaphor for the book. So I'm not going to go through the whole story sure. right now, but the primary um, metaphor in it is that the way you get, to your intended destination, which is in, in the, the story is the great mountain. How do you get to the place you want to get to in your own life? Um, it doesn't always involve brute force. <laughs> it involves being sly and um, in, in learning your, using your strengths instead of um, just forcing yourself into it. And also the, in the other piece in the story is how do you take what is your biggest giant, the thing that crushes you day in and day out, and make that be the thing that actually gets you to your intended destination? Yeah. That's the metaphor in the story. Mm -hmm. And so that was the perfect story as I was searching for like, well, what would be a central storyline? And what, well, this is the one I've been listening to this for 20 years. That first section of that story is perfect. And so I took it, rewrote it slightly. And it's the first two pages of the book is this very short storyline. And then I refer to it. And also I want to give credit to um, Robert Bly, who wrote a book called Iron John, where he did something similar, where he took a storyline and then use that story as a metaphor for the challenges modern men have in the world and you know mm -hmm. the challenges that we so he's the kind of the father of the modern men's movement and poet and amazing human being as well so that was the other in inspiration for the uh, the title of the book beautiful whether you're a drummer guitarist artist or not an artist but you have this mountain in front of you welcome to the journey welcome to our ship welcome to what we are here for. If you're listening to this, again, as we've mentioned before, whether you're on this journey and the mountain is what's in front of you, or you're here because you see that mountain in front of a loved one, that's what we're here for. This is an accompaniment to the book, The Drummer and the Great Mountain. So we thoroughly look forward to being on this journey with you, getting feedback from you, and seeing where this adventure takes us all along with this wonderful book that I have to tell you, despite the fact that Michael and I have now almost a four-year, maybe three-year friendship, but one that was had a connection from day one, and then who knew from that day when we first met at some musician gathering that Michael then would become my life coach, and now we're here. Um, I would have never guessed that there was this dawning that happened when we first met, just because this is the introductory episode, I have to let people know that I was there before this book was what is in front of you now. And I knew the day I met Michael, and this is no coincidence, I truly believe this. I met Michael at a musician gathering. We both are musicians in our other life as well. And that's why we're kind of here as the hunters that we are and have gone through the struggles of being creative people as creative people in the very paradigm of being creative, we tend to float. And then that sometimes causes issues for us because we, we don't focus on certain things we need to or want to. Long story short, literally within 10 minutes of, I think, talking to you, and, and, and my wife was there with me, who was my fiance at the time, just the conversation had to come, happen to come up that this is something you're working on. And Michael described, as he has today, literally in 30 seconds what the topic is 
And I remember turning to my fiance, my wife today at the time, and saying, holy you know what, that's me. He's talking about me. So if that's how you feel about yourself or someone you care for, that's why we're here. And we, I know that feeling of he's talking about me. So there are others like me, and there is a way to get on this mountain and conquer this mountain and figure out how to how to be with this neurological type as I learn to kind of modify how I'm looking at it. Because I'm on this journey with you. I want everybody in the audience to know that. And in general, I won't talk this much for sure. I'm going to let Michael do all the talking. <laughs> but I have to let people know the, the, the likeness. Yeah. Before we kind of leave people today for this opening session, just if you could summarize just in case someone's listening for the first time to something mm-hmm. like this. Tell them about the book, where they can get it, your websites, how to get on an email list on the website. Give us all the contact info. Got it. Um, first off, and also just thank you so much for of course. for making this happen. I'm very, very grateful for your insights. Pleasure. Um, okay, so the website is thedrummerandthegreatmountain.com. Uh, you can, uh, there's plenty of articles there. You can purchase the book there. Uh, as of now, the book is not on Amazon for um, specific purposes. I wanted to, to, to test market it and I've been pleasantly surprised how many people are interested in it. Great. So it may be on Amazon um, in the short term, mm-hmm. in a few months. Um, so that's the place. Check it out. Excellent. Um, and there's also plenty of free articles there. There's also a Facebook page that is growing. We've got a couple thousand people on it. So check that out um, and uh, get on the email list. So we, uh, I send out an emailing once a week with tips and um, sometimes it's references from the book. Uh, and those are some places to check out. And then also we will be doing some webinars here in the next few months. So if you have, uh, if you can tune in, um, we'd love to have you. The drummer and the great mountain.com is the website. So check it out. Michael, thank you so much for being with all of us here in the uh, drummer and the great mountain living room. Maybe you're having a cup of tea and listening to this. Like we said, maybe you're on your way to work from work, wherever it may be. We look forward to many more adventures uh, on this podcast with you. As I said, in the future, the goal of this is to be a companion to this wonderful book. And we will, in each episode, start delving into specifics from the book that via podcast, via hearing it directly from the author, hearing it directly from Michael, getting into more detail and focusing on topics that if he were to do in the book, it might be 800 pages long. So that's our goal um, for this for this podcast. Any closing words from you, my friend? I don't think so. I think just, just uh, as you're going through your day to day, just remember that you there's a huge community of people just like yourself and that the most some of the most successful people in the world share this neurological type and how you get from the challenges that you're facing now to a place where you're maximizing your potential is going to be uh, changing maybe how you view yourself and uh, transforming some of the self-judgments and more than likely a diet and exercise plan that really is optimized for you that may not be um, something that others around you may share, Mm -hmm. but you have to remember that this you're wired in a very specific way. And if you can just make a couple of adjustments in those regards, you're going to have, you can have major shifts in a short period of time. Couldn't have thought a better way to end this first episode. We'll see you guys on the journey on the mountain. Until next time, be well.